We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And for today's episode <laughs> of How to End the Gender Wars, we are featuring the beautiful, the lovely Be Simone. Ooh, the crowd ooh, goes ooh, wild. Ooh, ooh. <sighs> Oh, we got B in the G spot. B Simone. You guys are already familiar <laughs> with her as a comedian and actress, founder of B Simone Beauty, yes. and host of No For Sure podcast. Yes. Girl. Girl. Oh. And my client, right? Like you Literally. guys. <laughs> I coached Literally. you during your past relationship, and I had to bring you on today's episode to talk about relationships. Yeah. Um, one of the funniest women who I know. So mm -hmm. blessed to have you on the show. Thank Lou, and you. I miss you so I much. love you. I haven't seen you in so long. I know. This is going to be juicy because I already know that you are one of the most vulnerable people I ever. Am. I'm so honest. So, yeah, too honest. <laughs> <No>. um, <laughs> too honest. <laughs> I had to help you with that a little bit in your past relationship. I know, I know. You're like, okay, Girl, be you quiet. Say it like this. Don't tell him that. <laughs> she's like, I would type out something. She's like, okay, now what you're going to do is delete that. <laughs> and we're going to rewrite Back it like then, this. they didn't have unsend, but they they have unsend now. I so. know. I'm like, that's a, that's a godsend right there. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to, before we get into how to end gender wars, mm -hmm. you are going to share with us when you first fell in love with yourself. That's the spice breaker. Oh my god! What was that moment that you said to yourself, I am incredible and I really, really love myself. Wow. Thankfully, I think that was at a young age. Mm. Like, I think I always was pretty confident and had a lot of self-love. But actually, recently, I would say I started to battle with things that I never had to battle with before. Mm. Um, losing confidence, mm. maybe a little insecurities here and there, a little yeah. like things that I'm like, well, I don't see how somebody could be like that. Or how is she jealous? Or mm -hmm. I don't get that. I'm not like that. I'm like... God will humble you yeah. and you will start to feel these human emotions. And the best way that I got out of that and still coming out of that, um, it's just going to him, like mm. literally coaching myself through it, the affirmations, believing, knowing who I am, but I've never really dealt with low self-esteem, low confidence, mm -hmm. insecurities, like to that extent that yeah. affected me until recently. Mm. And that was because I changed so much. Like the person that got me to where I am. Yeah. I changed. So I'm like, I'm not even that person anymore. So I started to not want to fully be myself in this season mm -hmm. or like, I still have to be this crazy girl that I was when I went viral at 26. Well, I'm mm. 33 now. I'm yeah. not the same, <laughs> you know? I'm like, I am not that girl that I'm still part of her, but that is not all of me right now. So it caused me to have like, I'm like, oh my God, are they going to love the new me? Are they going to, mm. but just be myself in every season. So, um, I hope that answered your question. Yeah, I think, a little like, bit, I think to like, your point, like what you're saying is that while you went through this journey of like evolution, right? You had to give yourself permission to grow. And then other people had to give you permission to grow too. And then you had to kind of fall in love with who yeah, I became. Yeah, who is this new version who is this of new person? Me yeah. With a little bit of old, a little bit of yeah, new. Yeah. Who is this person now? Yeah. How did you realize? Because you said you had to do like some affirmations and um, mm -hmm. getting back to love of self. How did you realize you were out of love with yourself? Um, the emo the things I was feeling, like, um, that I had never felt before. I've always been confident. The light in the room. I walk in a room. I'm mm -hmm. like, you know how they'd be like, the loudest in the room is the most insecure. I don't know if... That ain't true. If, I don't think that's true. <laughs> it, to a certain extent. I feel like if you're loud and you're just not yourself and you just want attention. But I like being joy. I like having yeah. fun. I like being, like, owning my... Can I, you said I could go yeah, owning guess. my shit before anybody else says it. Like, mm -hmm. oh, she has a gap. I'm like, I make fun of my gap already. So it just helps me love myself when I say stuff about myself before somebody else says but it. But I feel like that's a comedian thing. It is. I hear comedians say all the time like, like that they became funnier. They realized they were funny because they made fun of themselves to get like, a, you know, the insecurity of the thing yeah, away from to it. To get it away. Yeah. It might be a defense mechanism at first. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, y'all are going to make fun of this. So let me just make fun of it. But it causes you to be like, like my friend yesterday, She we were talking and she was like, you think you'd ever get veneers and close your gap? I'm like, actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> actually, no, I wouldn't. Like it's, it's become a part of, it's like just who I am. It doesn't bother me, you know? But, um, so yeah, that, that is like what I'm going through now. I think, um, I knew, the, to answer your question, I knew when I started to feel feelings that I never really felt before. Mm -hmm. And maybe if I did, I wasn't as aware. I'm more self-aware now. So I'm like, dang, like, I do feel not really confident walking in a room. Dang, I am getting kind of anxious. Damn, maybe I am insecure about that. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't feel like I speak 
as as eloquently or as as you know I don't sound like super smart or super you know I started to have these little things that made me doubt myself and I had never ever dealt with that before so like the incidences were like you going on stage or interviews like what what were you participating in that you would afterwards reflect and be like oh did I do that right probably like in a room full of people Mm. like anxiousness in a room like before I'm the life of the party I'm walking in a room and now I walk into rooms I'm not as I'm more like timid Mm -hmm. or more like I'm like why am I changing why do I feel like this like I used to be lit in every room I like it might be a little bit of maturity and a lot of it is also too like I think um being publicly like canceled Mm. after that it took me a lot to get back up out of my shell and be like you know what people do still love me like everybody in the world doesn't hate you Braylon like (laughs) it's okay you're not I walk into a room like everybody's looking at me girl nobody even knows you're here (laughs) (laughs) so that was a mental thing like I'm walking into a room like does everybody hate me am I canceled you know but getting out of that and um yeah just having feelings that I never felt before acknowledging them mm-hmm. and literally speaking life into myself mm. talking to God about it like seriously rebuking it off of me and mm. walk, I'm walking in boldness I'm walking in freedom I'm walking in courage even when I don't feel it getting that back yeah yeah I mean you've always been a spiritual person I feel like yeah. anytime you've struggled with anything even when we were going through um the spicy life program it was very much like I'm going to ask you spicy, but then I'm also going to throw my problems in front of the God, uh, the Lord as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and there, there's always been the spirituality, yep. a part of any growth, like journey that you've been on. Yeah. And so I love that you're always cross checking with like self and then also like a higher power. For sure. Cause I mean, like I'm in therapy. I've been super consistent with my therapist. I had you very as a good. relationship coach, which so I'm going to come back as a single woman yes, now. Yes, because it's very different. It, excuse me. <laughs> um, it's time too. But God puts those people in your life as tools. Yeah. Like I, they're vessels. You're a vessel. God can speak through you. God can speak through my therapist. God can speak through my friends. But also I need to be able to hear his voice directly and yep. be so in tune spiritually that, you know, whatever he tells me to do, mm-hmm. I can... I know that in my body, yeah. in my spirit, in my mind, like I might not know why I'm saying no to something, but it just doesn't feel right. That's the Holy Spirit for me. You for know? Sure. So I want to use people and experiences and things as vessels also, but also have my direct connection with him. And I love your honesty about it, right? Like not recognizing yourself because then that gives just a little bit of confidence to other people to be able to vocalize or even acknowledge that like they may be struggling too. Mm-hmm. And I think like, Public figures need to do more of that, yeah. like showing our weaknesses yeah. versus always, you know, having to put up uh, a character yep. of perfection. Yep. So I, that's one of my favorite things about you is your Thank vulnerability you. and honesty. You're going to be honest with me today. Yeah, let's get it, girl. And let's talk Don't about the gender me. wars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So just to give people a little context exactly on what the gender wars are, mm-hmm. um, it's the... Sentiment and stereotypes that are being vocalized right now Mm -hmm. in regards to uh, males in the dating world being villainized, okay? Yeah. Uh, Being told or the story being painted that all men are toxic, all men are manipulators, all men are narcissists and cheaters. Jesus. And then the other storyline being that women are promiscuous, um, gold diggers, uh, superficial, and uh, <laughs> only out for self. And I don't believe either of those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> this narrative is, wild. is being told over and over. And I see it a lot when like any of the main like, you know, gossip pages for sure, for um, sure. on social media will post something for sure. that like someone tweeted or someone said. Mm-hmm. And you'll see like guys and girls mm-hmm. in the comments, Bantering, yeah, going, going back and forth, back and forth well, going in on this, each other. Women do that, yeah, yeah. Talking about like, here we go again, another topic of the gender oh, wars. Oh lord! So what we are doing though is feeding into this as a culture. And so, one, I want to hear your opinion on how you think we got there. How did we get to such a negative headspace about like male and female, this dating world that's going yeah. on right now? Maybe. I, I really don't have the answers, y'all. I am not an expert. You're, I know. But As I y'all know, I am single <laughs> and I am trying to become my feminine <laughs> self. I'm walking my feminine. I'm still working on that. Um, but I would say the first thing that came to my mind, maybe it is because culture has changed so much and me being one, an alpha female, mm-hmm. being an entrepreneur, being a leader, I have to, you know, I, I have my team under me. I yeah. lead my team. I'm a CEO. I'm... 
I'm the one percent of you know millionaires in this world that yeah. are like as a woman and a woman of color. Yeah. It's like I'm out for this. I'm a leader. I'm this. Like when I'm on stage or I have a show, I'm like I need you to do. That. I'm I'm the I'm the leader, mm -hmm. right? And making sure women that have to be that in their everyday life aren't taking that to their relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm still, you know, working on that and making sure in my next relationship I can sit back, let my partner lead. But maybe, maybe it's a little bit of that too. Like women are more independent now. Mm -hmm. Women are more, um, we got our own money now. Facts. So we're doing the providing. Some women feel like they have to do the protecting and things that, were originally for the man mm -hmm. women are doing, but just making sure we're not taking that to the relationship. I don't, I, I would love to be led in my relationship, mm -hmm. even though I'm a leader in my business, you know? So making sure I separate the two yeah. and I'm not like alpha, super alpha with my man. So you think that this has to do with, um, it, it sounds like this has to do with masculine feminine energy and, the roles that we play in relationship yeah. kinds of being muddled. Yeah. Us not really being able to identify what role we should be playing yeah. or where we necessarily fit into relationships yeah. anymore. And how to do it. Like, I understand there's masculine and feminine. I understand, okay, a male was here to protect and provide. And I'm going biblically, y'all. I'm just going based off of, like, God made the man. His first duty was the land. <laughs> so you get what I'm saying? Like, protect, provide. Then it was he brought Eve, okay? And then he, you know, was... That that's what I'm going by. And then Eve had to cut the apple. Up. And she she messed up all humanity. <laughs> oh, I still be like, now nah, Eve, you made See, one little decision that's I don't affecting know. They us. Put that blame on us. I don't really know. I don't really know. But don't they, really know. they they say, well, where was Adam? <laughs> Where was Adam? If he was leading, no. Okay. <laughs> see, see, that's the gender wars right that's there. That's the gender wars right there. If Adam was doing his if job. If Adam was doing his job, she wouldn't have been snooping around for apples. Yeah. No. But um, I don't know where I was going with that. But saying that, you know, I don't want to, even though I have to do that in my business, mm -hmm. my everyday life, my single life, I, I'm still learning the the roles and and bef prior to my spiritual journey I've always been spiritual like mm -hmm, I've always loved sure. God I've always been I'm a Christian woman um, my dad's a pastor grew up in the church but for me there's a huge difference between religion and relationship and I feel like I've found a relationship with Jesus Christ mm -hmm. for myself recently mm -hmm. starting last year and um now I'm for me I feel like everybody should have a blueprint for me now the blueprint is biblical the bible and um me learning more about that so i can learn my role as a woman mm -hmm. as a wife and know the type of man i'm looking for like well biblically it says it right here mm -hmm. so if we're gonna use something to hold us accountable i want to use this rule book this not even rule book because it's not rules but this this you know this book and go by this i think people don't really have a standard or like what what are we basing it off of Okay, so um, to your point as a fellow Christian, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to play mm -hmm. devil's advocate. Okay, okay. Because uh, I already know what people's respond. Like, I already know my listeners, and they, and some of them are going to hear this and say, but the Bible was written so long ago. Mm -hmm. And in and the time Bible, changed. we didn't even Yeah, we work. couldn't even speak. You couldn't be a CEO yeah. or be someone beauty yeah. during that time. So you have to apply it to 2023 okay, re we go. reality. Yeah, I'm not saying like the woman has to cook, the woman has to clean, she has to be quiet. Women couldn't even talk in the church. Women couldn't even wear certain things. Like, of course, certain things are, are different now, but I do believe there are certain roles that God intended for mm -hmm. men and- if the man is doing that, making sure women, we, we choose our partners. Mm -hmm. So making sure you're choosing a man. Well, he this, well, he that. Well, you chose him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like also take self-evaluation and reflect on self and be like, what is causing me to choose a man that doesn't know how to protect, mm -hmm. that doesn't know how to provide, that doesn't know how to do the things I want him to do. And making sure you're preparing yourself to choose the right partner. We choose our partners. I think I'm hearing you want us as women to take accountability. A hundred percent. But I think what we also need to touch on is holding men accountable to raising other men. Yeah. I think that's something yep. that I agree with that. is missing within the yeah. culture is good men yeah. of high ethical standards yep. being present yep. in the home. Yep. Raising their yep. children. Yep. And I feel like when men don't have someone yep. who they respect to mirror, yep. right, they are winging it and 
figuring it out as they go along. And then we also live in a culture that since the beginning of time has always celebrated and given more permission to men to be actually more promiscuous and adventurous Mm -hmm. in the bedroom Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. with women. I think the other part of what's happening with uh, the culture is that we've, as women, always like vocalized wanting to be in relationship. Us as women are naturally more relational. Yeah. And with us not holding men accountable to being relational yep. and yep. valuing commitment, yep. we've given them permission and leeway to run amok. Yep. 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 <laughs> and this is not me putting blame on us. This is me understanding how much we want love yep. that we are willing to accept sometimes crumbs. Anything. Just to have yeah. companionship. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I do think that when it comes to power, us mm-hmm. as women have more power than we believe. And I speak to yeah. this oftentimes is that I like, know that we you have got to tap into it. Fallen for to... men having more power than <laughs> yeah. us while men are powerful. Um, a woman who guides a man's emotions really has the power. That's power. There's power in That's that lit. for sure. Show me how to do that. Yes, I got you. I got <laughs> You're you. Like, come on back. I just need crowd. you to listen. Yeah. <laughs> I will. I do be listening. I'll be like, Daddy, no, you this did right? you I did good. You did good when you were in a relationship. Now being single is a whole it's so different. Because now you're seeing like, oh dang, I I have to work again. Yeah. And feel good about what I'm doing. Yeah. Right. And I not to say that, um, because I don't want to encourage that it's like slim pickings. What I do want, though, is for us to be like very clear on what we want and making sure that we release anything that doesn't serve us, anyone who isn't meant for us. For sure. But as far as the gender wars are concerned, I think that we have really like pitted ourselves against one another when we should be affirming one another. We should be encouraging one another. We should be uplifting one another and should be is really easy to say. But now we need to be held accountable to actually doing, doing that. Yeah. And that's the harder yep. part is like, how do we change this narrative? Yeah. And so that's why I wanted to bring you on the episode to like brainstorm that because you are an influencer. Mm-hmm. You have mm-hmm. the power to change the game. Mm-hmm. And so imagine you plus all the other influence influencers out there or people who are in positions that are now you know, speaking positively Mm -hmm. about the male and female species Mm -hmm. and the love that can be created. I literally just posted something on my story yesterday. What did you post? Let me see. That is so crazy. What did I post? Just about, I just have a soft spot in my heart for black men. Mm. And and I just really do. And what did I post yesterday? I have such a special place in my heart for the black man. I love loving on them, speaking life into them, making them feel seen. Black man, I love you. I just posted that yesterday. Like, I'm not about to be on my platform or anywhere, even in private, like niggas ain't shit or Mm -hmm. men ain't this or men ain't, that does exist, but not in, I know there are amazing men out there. I know there are God fearing men out there. I know there are men out there who desire to be husbands, not because their girl wants to get married, but because they truly want the family unit. They want to be a husband. They want to serve God. They want to protect and provide for their family and love family and exude love and openness and depth. Mm -hmm. Come on. What book is that from? The book you told me to read. <laughs> uh, the Way of the Superior the of the Man. Superior Love, man. openness, and so death. So many people have read that since um, I started like making my clients yep, read it. read it. Yeah. Now it's a lot so of people, beautiful. I've made like men who were anti-relationship read yeah. it. Um, and it's really changed their perspective. So uh, my book is almost finished. It's still coming. Come on, It's been come a, on. a work in progress. I know. But you definitely... But I believe did, that. Yeah, you, yeah. you did. You definitely. And, but how did you? So this is the other part. Because part of what happens with us um, continuing this narrative of there's no good man is when we haven't experienced mm-hmm. it or we've been hurt by somebody who we cared for that mistreated us. Yeah. Right. So then we go and we tell you that get story. You get tainted. You get upset. You're heartbroken. And because we're hurt, we yeah. wind up getting another relationship and choosing yep. and attracting someone else who continuously hurts us. Yeah. Because we haven't changed our vibration. We haven't done the healing work. Mm-hmm. How, after experiencing hurt or loss in a relationship, have you remained hopeful and loving? I just know, first of all, I can't be the only human out here in the world. Like, if it's <laughs> in me, it's in somebody else. Because I truly believe that for me. I believe, I, by no means am I perfect. By no means am I, do I have it all together. I'm still trying to figure out how to walk in my feminine. How to be a wife. Am I ready to be a wife? Probably not. But in this season, I can prepare. But, um... I, I believe it exists. I've never been, I've been 
er, almost every relationship I've been in, well, not almost, every single relationship I've been in that was like, actually, you're my girl mm-hmm. girlfriend, I'm your boyfriend, I've been cheated on. Mm-hmm. And a- after everyone, like even my last one mm-hmm. that you coached me through, um, RIP to Chris, I love you so much. Um, um, we ended on, you know, a bad note. Mm-hmm. And thank God the last thing I said to him before he passed was something positive, which mm. like I, I could tell you about that. But um, every relationship. You don't want to tell us on the show? Yeah, I can tell you. I will. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, I will tell you. I'll get back to that. I want to know on the podcast. Yeah. On the spicy life. I will. Right now. On the spicy life. Because <laughs> you know, Chris, you know us together. But, I know. Um, and that was, and I just want to put the interview in real quick. That was a beautiful relationship. It really was. Although he yeah. had some demons that he did not share with us yeah. during the relationship, right? And there was voids that he needed to fill that yeah. clearly uh, independent therapy would have helped serve him yeah through. you guys did the right thing by trying to get counseling in your relationship Together, yeah to become better for one another yeah. and he did make an effort and he was trying and he, and did he was love a good you. he's a good person he was a good person like chris was a great person but every relationship i've been heartbroken and every i'm like okay i'm gonna get through this i'm gonna cry and then next like i'm not gonna get stuck at door number four if my Very husband good. is door 30 he's- like very good. Keep knocking. I love love. I believe in love. I feel like I exude love. And I just believe that my husband is out there preparing for me, just like I'm preparing for him. So what B just told you guys about is um, a analogy that uh, I use for doors, right? And when you guys hear us say doors, Oftentimes what will happen is we'll date a few people. And this also, if you guys are on dating apps or out there, dating period will make sense to you. Uh, We get into maybe liking someone or into relationship. Stuck. And we get stuck. You get to door number one, door number two, door number three. And maybe you have fallen hard for someone Mm -hmm. behind door number three. And that healing period or that recovery period maybe takes you forever to get through. And so the timing to get to door number 20 of your husband's behind door number 20 is a lot longer Mm -hmm. because you still have so many more lessons that you need to learn. So what B's referencing is her saying, like, in order to not stay stuck and to hurry up and get through these doors, she's not rushing through dating or relationships, but she's taking her love lesson Mm -hmm. and then applying applying it it behind the next door. Okay, what did I learn from door number five, door number six, door number seven? Because if we spend five years trying to recover from door number three, we have wasted our entire youth on the wrong guy. Yeah, the wrong guy. And I want people to get better at that. I want them to understand that no one gets to escape the pain or the the rejection in life mm-hmm. or the heartbreak. Mm-hmm. But I think that we do allow it to break us. I think yeah. that oftentimes we see ourselves as damaged yeah. because of the rejection. Yeah. What did you tell yourself in the moment that you found out your partner wasn't faithful? Well, I made up my mind before the relationship. Like I, I think it's to the healing that you do personally and like the non-negotiables you set before and really sticking beside those yep. and not breaking promises and commitments you made to yourself. Yep. I'm like, I don't care if we are walking down the aisle. If yep. I am walking down the aisle and a girl says, I object, I'm, <laughs> I'm fucking your husband. Guess what? I'm goodbye. not. Goodbye. So that was my non-negotiable in that moment. And that might change. That might, I'm not saying like, If I was married, it would have been the same thing. I don't know. I've never been a wife and had to walk away from a marriage. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But in the dating phase, for me, a non-negotiable is cheating. So I knew if that happened, no matter how I felt, no matter how much I love you, no matter we house shopping, it Mm -hmm. doesn't matter, I am going to walk away. But if you've only experienced being cheating on, Mm -hmm. being cheated Mm -hmm. on, you've only experienced being Mm -hmm. cheated on, how do you continue to affirm or believe that all men don't cheat if all you've had is cheaters because there's someone out there who has experienced only cheaters so to have this belief that a non-cheater is going to come into their life is very hard yeah i want to know how you do it i don't know i believe i don't know i don't know why i believe that i don't know if it's It's in me from something and i go back to me i think the always the glass half full always positive always that was a gift god gave me Mm. And maybe I am a vessel to plant the seed in people that aren't naturally born yeah. with that gift. Yeah. Because I've always been like that since young. Like one no does not, it doesn't move me. I'm mm. like, okay, 
love you. Bye. Or, or I, you're not good enough. I'm like, okay. It, it didn't break my, maybe that was a gift I was born with so that I can plant seeds in people that weren't born with that gift. Everybody has their different gifts. Yep. I feel like I've had that since a very young so age. So your gift would be like optimism. Optimism. Glass half full. Like always like seeing the brighter side. If, if I fail at something, it's like, try again. Okay. I didn't do good. Oh, well, let me do. It was never like, woe is me. Yeah. It was I've never been like that. And I ask myself that often recently, actually, because me and my friend had the conversation, like, where does that come from? Yeah. Why can you and your sibling be raised in the same household? And <laughs> I'm like, get it together. <laughs> my sister is here. She's in here somewhere. Sissy poo. <laughs> but um, I'm like, don't you believe it's all in you? You have the power. And she's like, actually, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh. but like, you know, it, I think I was born with that gift and God is using me to plant the seed of hope and in people that weren't born with it. I think the other part is that people need to understand is that while you are telling yourself a positive thought, right? Like, mm -hmm. okay, I was just cheated on, but all men don't cheat, right? 100%, like that's the positive thought. hundred percent. You are giving yourself permission to go and try again and attempt to prove what could be a negative thought, right? That like yeah. there's no good man. You're actually out on a mission to prove to yourself yep. through the actions that you're taking yep. that positive things can happen yep. again where other people won't give themselves a chance. Some yeah. people are cheated on or their hearts are broken and it takes them down for the count. And they're like, I'm just not going to put myself back out there or again. Or they're like, I will. And if he cheats, oh, well, I'm just going to stay if he's a good, a good it. guy. Mm -hmm. and, every, and it's like, you know, or just, well, all men do. Like I, that bothers me so much when women are like, girl, all niggas ain't shit. All men cheat. Mm -hmm. Like, girl, it is what it is. You're going to get a little cheated on. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way you can believe that. Because are you, are you just, and uh, some of them might be, like, are you a cheater? They're like, yeah, girl, I cheat on a man too. No, but um, do you th feel There's like, no way you can believe that. So I feel like these beliefs are very loud, though, and I feel like they have contributed to the gender wars. 100%. Do you think that it has to do with the narrative going further and louder because of social media? Like our parents' generation, if a man stepped outside of his household yeah, nobody or cheated, knew. Yeah, it that was, stayed within the community yeah, or the village. Yeah, yeah. Now things are done publicly. There's video, there's photo, yep. there's a uh, text message yeah, evidence. Yep, there's not there's yep. so many tools for us to find out, but also for us to not just investigate, but mm -hmm. also see mm -hmm. it going on in other people's mm -hmm. lives, right? And it's, I feel like it's also a huge platform where it's culturally, visually accepted. Mm. So these younger girls are looking at, listening to this music mm -hmm. that's like, it don't matter what he do, as long as he give me a bag. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, it's okay. I don't, I don't want love anyway. Mm -hmm. I just want the trip. But it's like, you really want love, but you're just going to take that because you've already pre-programmed your mm -hmm. mind to say, he's going to cheat anyway. He ain't shit. No way. Let me just get money, a bag, yep. a trip. And now it's this endless cycle. And the only way to break the cycle is for somebody to do it. Yep. Like you, you have to do it. You have to be the one to be like, no, like, I don't believe that. I'm not going to live that. I'm not going to walk in that. No matter what I see on these blogs, no matter what I see in culture, no matter how many celebrities mm -hmm. I see going back and forth, getting embarrassed by their partner, going, it's like, you know, it's just culturally it, the norm. I think it's, that's what we see in culture as mm -hmm. normal. And it's just not, it's not. It's not. We have to, we have to in the narrative that yeah, it's normal because it's, it's not normal it's, not. it's actually it's abnormal. actually abnormal but how do we get back to a healthy place i think it starts with yourself like really i know y'all be lonely i know y'all <laughs> i know i get it i've been single for two years before my ex i was single for eight okay i get it like I know you be lonely. I know you be bored. Do something else with your time. You know, if you're bored, go start a business. Go, <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, just go start a just business. Just go start a business. That's the solution. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's like really, really, really making the choice and the decision to be like, this is not my life mm -hmm. or what I want for my life. And I think that's what I do. Like, I, I even do it with the smallest things. Like if I have to go to the gym, right, at 6 a.m. I know the night before I'm like, I'm gonna wake up at 6 a.m. I'm gonna go to the gym. I'm about to get this workout in. Early bird gets the worm. <laughs> <laughs> and then that alarm goes off. I literally be in my bed like, okay, on three, you're gonna get up. 
Like you have to literally play these games mm-hmm. with yourself because yes, my flesh doesn't want to get up, but it, I know that that is what is best for me long-term longevity. So it's the same thing with relationship. Do not answer that call. Mm-hmm. Do not go back to that. You know, that's not your husband, you know, making those conscious decisions to really remove yourself from things that don't serve you. So one of the things that I was so proud of you when, uh, I got the call from you that Chris cheated, Mm -hmm. uh, was that not only did you end the relationship immediately, but you didn't continue to entertain him. You didn't continue, uh, checking for him a little bit, but you, I made you stop looking at his page and we had like a conversation about like, how are we going to remove him? And you didn't text him. You weren't like checking for him. You weren't, um, absorbing yourself with the life that you thought you guys were going to have. Yeah. So it was like almost releasing and not allowing for obsession to take place. Because I think oftentimes we will do that, right? We'll be like, but you promised me this and you promised me this. And you said you were going to do this. And so we still remain hopeful that that person's going to come back or, Mm -hmm. you know, beg for forgiveness. And you cut it off cold turkey. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people are capable of doing that. Yeah. I agree. There was a point in my life where I wasn't capable of doing that. If it was probably five years, four years, even three years prior, I probably would have went back and went back mm-hmm. and went back. But that that solo time, you guys, is the time for you to do the self-work and make up your mind on what you truly will and won't accept. Don't make it up when you're in love. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, all right, you, I already love you, whatever. Like, you're figuring it out while you're already, you know, you're too deep <laughs> in love with this man now. I had my mind made up on certain things, not everything. And and mind you, like, um, my ex is a phenomenal, excuse me, he was a phenomenal man. He was a phenomenal person. He was the life of the party. He was so sweet. Um, and there was things in the relationship that I should have done better. Mm-hmm. Like, I probably wasn't the best girlfriend, like, mm-hmm. um, in certain ways. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? But for me... I had one non-negotiable, I had a few, but one of my non-negotiables, I made that up in my mind prior to the relationship. So I was like, going into any, in the next relationship, this is what I won't allow. And I, I decided to stick by that promise I made to myself. If we had to talk to any of your exes and ask them what your toxic relationship trait could be, because mm-hmm. they exist in all of us. What yeah. Would where do you need the most growth? If I would ask one of your exes where you should grow, what grow, would you say? Grow. Where could you have grown more? Maybe projecting. Mm. Like, I noticed that a little bit in my uh, last relationship. Like, things that I would nitpick at him. Like, you need to do it. Like, I'm not planting the seed. I'm not encouraging you. I'm telling you what you need to fix, what you need to do better. How could I think I'm motivating you? Like, if you would just, you would be. It's like. First of all, be quiet, because if you would just, you would be (laughs) like, I think I projected so much. Like there was, um, I'm not going to go into detail about it, but something that he did that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm like, why do you do that? Like just nagging about it. And I really sat back one day. I was like, Braylon, wow. Like you do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm just in a different way. You just have a different vice with it. Mm. It might not look the same, but that's exactly who you are in a different area of your life. So projecting, like wanting to fix everything in them, it's like, girl, you got a million things to fix in you. Fix you, plant seeds of growth in that man, plant seeds of where you see he is doing phenomenal. And I didn't just like bash my boyfriend. <laughs> like, I hate you. You're not, no, I didn't do that. Um, there I was did moments affirm of him. Frustration. Yes. You, were, yeah. you were good at affirming, but there was moments of Affra- and, yes. a frustration. Yes. And in a relationship, you get permission to be frustrated with your partner. It's yeah. not always like perfect. Yeah. You're going to see things that you're like, dang, I would like you to be yeah. better in this area. I see more for you, yeah. right? And but you don't like, want to be in love with potential. You actually want to see the yeah. person like, execute the things you know that they're capable of. But like who they are in that moment is who they are. And they Correct. have to make the choice to want to live up to their potential. Correct. You can't their, force it. Their better self. So I think 
I don't know if that's uh, that is toxic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's toxic. I was really trying to encourage him. <laughs> no, girl. So encouraging and motivating and pushing in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. I think I did it in a way that's like pushing the partner away. Like this is not who he is right now. And either you're going to plant those seeds and watch him grow mm -hmm. or you're going to plant the seeds and he's not going to grow and you can decide to walk away. Yes. I remember this um, talking about this with you and asking if you had to accept him right now as he is without the growth, let's just say this is- He never changed. He, he yep. never changes. Could you do Marry that? Mm -hmm. Because I remember purpose being so big for you and you're like, I need him walking more in his mm -hmm. purpose. I need him walking more in his purpose. Mm -hmm. And I felt like purpose was so important to you and he was still in his process and on his journey yeah. of discovering yeah. his purpose. And it was frustrating for you to not have his like, self-love is high maybe mm -hmm. and his discernment and his wisdom as knowledgeable as yours because you were yeah. doing like a comparison yeah comparing and this and that and it was just that was my toxic trait but with us bringing it to the light and you bringing attention to it mm -hmm. you acknowledged it but then guess what you did you were like okay that's a problem that i'm doing this how can I work on it? How can I be better? And you always were receptive to like, okay, I need to change the language that I'm using. I need to yeah, be uh, yeah. supportive also through actions. Yeah. Like I, you've always been someone who has worked towards like that growth for yourself and then how you show up in relationship. Yeah. yeah. So and I think, wanting to be better. Yeah. Wanting to be yeah. better. But I think it's important that you be in relationship with someone who also wants to be better, not for just for sure. you, but for themselves for them, as well. For them. And I don't want to be with a partner, and this off of my ex, I'm saying in general, I don't want to be with a partner that wants to be better for me. Mm -hmm. I don't, don't do, I want you to be a better human for you and your relationship with God and your spiritual journey and you on this earth being who God called you to be as a man. And that will just naturally be better for me. Mm -hmm. Don't, I don't want you to let me be better for you or be better because this is what you want me to do. I want you to just be better because you want to be yeah. evolve as a human on your own. And that will naturally be better for me, you know? And, and that's that's true because if you are like the sole reason that they're doing it. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> do you even really want to do it? Do you yeah. want to do it? If I'm yeah. not in the picture where you still be this way. And then yeah. also, it, what if I fall off and I need you to pick us back up? If it's not really in you and it's only indicative I need of that dog me, in you. how are you going to yeah. pull me out of my dark moments? Yep. How are you going to enrich my life and grow yep. me? Yep. So I like that you don't want full responsibility. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> being on you yeah. and the reason being you behind it. Yeah. What role do you think that, and I want you kind of to speak to the influence that women have over men, mm -hmm. because I think that we mentioned earlier, the power that we have as women to kind of shift the gender wars that mm -hmm. are going on. What do you think as women, we could be doing more of to get men who maybe don't have the father figure or the men who they look up to, to mm -hmm. be a good role model in relationship for them. How can we help assist? Mm. Maybe, I mean, I just said that, but maybe affirming them, speaking life into them, pulling out the positive things you see in them, opposed to always nitpicking the negative or the problem or the, the this, the that, like speaking life into them and telling them who God called them to be. Like, I don't need you to do this. No, you know, you are loved. You're wonderfully made. You have a purpose. Like you're so smart. You're so, what are the things that we can pull out of them with support opposed to being like you're not doing this right do you think that that has to be because i feel like we will do that in relationship but not men on the street no i think all, all the, time. the way around so we like, need to be responsible doing it for all men all men all the way around like even um megan was talking about this my co-host megan ashley shout Hi, out megan. no for sure we podcast. miss, you. We miss, we miss you. you um she was like i am being intentional on being nicer to men that try to talk to me that i don't want to talk to beautiful like even if i don't want to talk to them i'm being nice to them i'm i'm being intentional on how i reject a black man how i say no to a black man mm. how i even me I, I see random black i love complimenting them yes i just see that i'm like I love it. I find something that I do like. So I'm not just lying. Like you look so handsome. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you look a mess, but it's fine. Some, I love your hat. I love your haircut. You look fresh today. And, and a lot of men think that's flirting. And sometimes we just go on, you know, but, um, speaking life into them and letting them know, like, I see you mm -hmm. because I love that. We love that as a, um, as black women and getting that for black sure. men. There's certain things that when black men say it, it's I'm powerful. like, what? 
it means so much coming from you. Yes. I need y'all to say how y'all love us. I need y'all to say how our hair looks beautiful. Yes. I need y'all to say how our skin color is fine. Whether we're light, we're dark, we're in the middle, we're mocha, we're chocolate, <laughs> we're vanilla. The whole rainbow what, what, of us. The whole rainbow of us black women, or us colorful black women, it means more coming from a black man. Even if it's not romantic, it can be a platonic compliment, you know? So, I want you to, so I'm an assist, but I want you to break down the why. I'm a cis, but I want you to break down the why. Uh, because you're black. But, and it means a why. lot coming from you because we're the same. I Keep want going. you to know that a black man loves me. Not, not that I'm not good enough for, you know, a black man. And that's what I want. I want my kids to be black. I want to date a black man. So um, knowing that we mean something to y'all. Okay, so I'm going to expand on it just a little bit because I think that anytime we bring up... Um, gender war or uh and the and the role that our um black culture plays that on it that's going on right now yeah. is that as black women we aren't celebrated enough in society mm -hmm. and so when we have someone who mirrors us when we have our the yin to our yang right mirroring us and yeah. saying hey not only do i love you i love myself yeah through you right because you are my rib it is more than a compliment. It is a affirmation that we matter. It is an affirmation that we are seen, yeah. that we are understood. Yeah. And when you are a part of a culture where the men within your culture is the fastest growing population to date outside of the race and be with others. And mind you, and yes, this is coming from someone who is mixed. I am saying, though, that I still understand what's going on within the culture as a black and Mexican woman, mm -hmm. that it is something that we as black women are dealing with all the time mm -hmm. is having to still love us through feeling and seeing sometimes our men not. And it looks like not just maybe being with uh, someone else, but speaking negatively about us. Yeah. And so when we have positive reinforcement and yeah. someone saying, hey, I love you, you beautiful black queen, yep. or yep. your skin color, yep. or not just the, the texture of your skin, but just the way that you are a visionary, yep. the way that you are more than just strong, you also yep. are capable of being loving yeah. and vulnerable, and I want to take care of you and your needs. Because like the opposite of that, just like <sighs> society telling a black man, you're this, you're that. Correct. Black men are thugs, black men are niggas, black men, man, they always leave the household. Black Society is telling us that every day. No, I'm going to look at you and be like, you are powerful. You're so smart. You're so sexy. Yes. I love the way you look. I know you probably have billion dollar ideas in that mind. Yep. Like you are not what society is portraying you to be. Black women are hoes. Black women are this. The black women are the bottom of the barrel. No, it feels good for a black man to see that. Of course, that's not what we are. You know what I mean? So the opposite of that, like you said, affirming that black man, society is telling you you belong behind bars. And I think also <laughs> society is also uh demonizing us for having standards so i think this mm -hmm. plays into um the gender war is being told as a black woman that you have to settle or that you can't yeah. aspire for greatness or have a, a high value man mm -hmm. and that you need to settle i think it's unfair to um tell someone that they not only should not want what they want yeah. but that they're incapable of getting what they want and i do think that there's some like skill set that we will teach you that through the spicy life uh but it really is about mindset and belief system which yeah. i think that your belief system you've helped like crack some of that code yeah in the positive thinking even if you haven't experienced it for yourself you still remain in the light right mm -hmm. you haven't mm -hmm. allowed for like this shadow of darkness yeah. to like take over you're still yeah. like nope i have a goal yeah. i'm going to attain it how do yeah. i achieve it how do i get there does yeah. it mean i have to get coaching does it mean i need to go to more therapy does yep. it mean i need yep. to not eat for 10 days because you are on some crazy cleansing <laughs> stuff <laughs> i'm like wait you didn't yep. eat for 10 all days? the things um, yeah <laughs> you do whatever it takes by any means necessary yep. and i love that about you but that mm -hmm. is why you've been able to prove to yourself that you shouldn't give up right 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 and i think right. that's what sets you apart sometimes from uh the haves and have nots mm -hmm. or the doers and mm -hmm. the do nots mm -hmm. is that you're like even though I failed I'm gonna get back up 100 yeah. times it's it's literally like um, the analogy that came to mind running on a track mm -hmm. if you just look at the whole 
Okay, one lap. And they're like, I mean, I cannot run that lap. I don't believe that. I believe that before I get around there, I'm going to pass out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just sit right here. And whoever comes to me comes to me. If you just run a little bit, you're like, okay, that wasn't that bad. Like, I'm like <laughs> one fourth of the way there. I can there. do it. I can do it. But you have to start. For That's sure. with everything. That's how you build your faith, your hope, your confidence by starting yep. and doing something and seeing the seed you planted come to fruition. You're like, it's a track record. For sure. You know, it's like the more you do it, it's like, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. You see the fruit of your labor. You see the seed you've been planting. But a lot of people don't even start or they start and then they trip and they've tripped backwards. So they're like, dang, I'm back to square one. Facts. Okay. Start again. Yeah. Do it again. You got to do it again. You, you can make it around that track, but you have to start. For sure. Yeah. And, and on that note, you guys, uh, you need to start. If you can't do it on your own, if you're having a lack of success in the relationship area and actually not just attracting what you want, but attaining what you want, being in a healthy, committed relationship, if you've never seen it, if you've never experienced it, it may be hard to believe that it exists for you. Mm -hmm. You need to sign up for my class, Come Your on. Purpose Mate Awaits. Mm -hmm. Six weeks, I'm going to coach you and guide you in a classroom setting where you actually get to get relationship advice from me uh, in one hour in evening. You're going to have homework. You're going to have uh, exercises that you do. And then you're going to come together with other sisters that understand what you're going through so cool. and have questions around relationships. And so it really is an accelerated course around my Spicy Life program. So we'll explore self, passion, intimacy, communication, and learning to say yes, which are the five fundamental things you need for a healthy relationship. So sign up ASAP yeah. for your purpose mate Oh wait, I'm signing up. Yes. You, no, you're doing one-on-one. -on -one. No, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm signing up for something. I'm about to get back in there. Yeah. It's an accelerated version, like six oh, weeks okay, okay, versus okay. the 90 day program, okay. which the 90 day program is great, but uh, the one-on-one -on -one coaching is one-on-one -on -one coaching does make a difference in like your experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that for what you're trying to achieve, like you want a husband like mm -hmm. tomorrow, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we need I to go do. through, uh, and I want to prepare to be a yeah. wife. Like, I'm not just like, I want a husband. I'm like, I, I want to make sure I'm the best version. Like, so when I do meet him, I don't mess it up. Yeah. Or I don't run him off or I don't like, that was a great man. Oh my God. I'm so childish. <laughs> I don't know how to walk in my feminine. Like I want to make sure I'm ready. You know, you keep saying you don't know how to walk in your feminine. I know. I, I don't Why think I'm fully there. Okay. What is it? And who told you that you're not feminine enough? Where are we getting this, uh, I don't believe from. I'm getting that belief because I feel like I'm always put in the sister, homegirl, funny girl box. So I don't, I think I kind of do that initially as a defense mechanism. Cause it's like, if you don't like me, if I'm not good enough for you, mm -hmm. if I'm not, I'm just going to be funny. I'm going to be your homie. I'm going to be cool. And but it's who like, says being funny isn't feminine. Well, no, I know, I know. But I'm just saying like, I don't know. I just put up that wall as a protection. Like, let me just be the, I'm your homie. I'm like doing. <laughs> okay. So. Yes. The homie so, stuff. So you're actually right. If you are <laughs> putting up a wall yeah. for protection, that would be masculine. Because energy. I'm not confident in my feminine, I feel like. That sounds like you got a little bit of wounded masculine and wounded feminine going okay. on though. Right? So like if you were more codependent or if you uh, were making more excuses or if you had um, more manipulation in your wounded, I would say, okay, you're definitely in the wounded feminine. Okay. But because you are putting up this defense, you're in your wounded masculine. So you are right about the masculine energy, mm -hmm. but it's not, I'm just operating my masculine energy. You're in your wounded masculine energy mm -hmm. because what happens is we will find that, uh, we are extremely attached when we're in mm -hmm. our wounded feminine. Mm -hmm. We may be more needy, we may mm -hmm. be more anxious, mm -hmm. And we're like, okay, those energies don't serve mm -hmm. me because I keep getting rejected in yeah. my wounded feminine. And it hurts too yeah. bad to experience those. Yeah. So instead of being in my wounded feminine, I'm going to be in my wounded masculine and just be like maybe a dick or... <laughs> right. Or be funny. Or be this, or you be know, this. Be, be this trickster, this, you know, this jokester, right. this asshole right. because... Um, that feels better yeah. than the hurt and anxiety over in our wounded feminine. Yeah. And I have even been guilty of those shifts yeah. of being like in my wounded feminine and then being like, okay, being clingy doesn't work for me and I ain't gonna heal that. Right. I'm instead just put this wall up in my wounded masculine right. and uh, protect myself. Yeah. Neither one are serving the situation. <laughs> right. So that means we need to do wounded masculine work. Okay. Because you keep saying, I'm masculine energy. Girl, you wounded masculine energy. Mm. So but if we break that down, you will be 
Oh, that makes so much sense. Okay. This is why we need to do the individual work. Um, part of what you experienced with Chris and why you guys were magnets for each other was not only because you operate in your wounded masculine, uh, and you probably did feel comfortable and more safe with mm -hmm. him, but he too was in his wounded masculine. Mm. And so there was an understanding that was going on there. There, mm. And this is why we had to do a lot of intimacy work with you guys. Mm -hmm. um, even like the expression part and like yeah. delivery of your messaging. Because both of you guys would go toe to toe and be like, okay, yeah. well, you're not going to out man me. And then you'd be like, well, yeah. he went too far. He hurt my feelings. Yep. And yeah. I'm no, like, you're now you and your feminine. <laughs> now you want to be feminine. Yeah. So... <laughs> But there's work to be done because I don't want you to repeat that, right? For I want sure. us to heal that For so sure. that you also don't gravitate to wound some a man who is he could be a great guy, but who's heavy on the wounded masculine. Okay. I want like us to do some healing work around that. And I didn't mean to go so far off, but um you brought that to my attention and I needed yeah. to really address it really quick. Yeah. Um so this brings us back to gender wars though, because what we do see happening in society is wounded feminine fighting wounded masculine. And what I mean by that is, if you guys are even familiar with uh, attachment theory, uh, there's uh, anxious attachment, avoidant attachment, and secure attachment. Mm -hmm. Within that theory, it says that secure attachment are more likely to gravitate to each other and take themselves off the market. Mm. Therefore, leaving anxious and avoidant attachment, right? Anxious mm. is like, we're going to just say needy. Avoidant is afraid of commitment. Okay. Those two people are left on the market together. Now, either becoming in relationship with one another mm. and highlighting each other's inadequacies. Mm. So when we speak to the gender wars going on, there is truth that there are not great men on the market and not great women, but we are not all like that. Yeah. But what we do see happening, though, when you don't do the healing work is unhealed people getting with unhealed people, yeah. hurting one another, and then yeah. being mad at the world that they've been hurt, yep. but they have been magnets for those hurt people. Yep. Yep. Because a healed person isn't going to make it easy to fall in love with an unhealed person. Wow. They're going to recognize, oh, you're unhealed. There's too much work to be done. Oof. I need to walk away, I have to sir. walk away. Yes. Yeah. So I think, um, yes, you, so you bring this, <laughs> this point to us. Uh, it, it, it helps with some of your guys' uh, maybe understanding around what's going on. But one of the things that B said that I think is important is her not repeating the narrative, right? Like her not speaking negatively about it and perpetuating mm -hmm. and instead like reinforcing the positive things about black men, 100%. the positive things that you love about men, yep. because you're not just telling the world that you're telling yourself that. Yeah. So that yeah. when you are in their presence and you and Megan are in their company, you guys are like, yeah. you know what? I'm going to be kind because I want to receive kindness. Yeah. I'm going to be love and light because I want to receive love and yeah. light. And I think that that is where we start is yeah. not looking at men to 100% change because that's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. We're not going to be able to solve for all the fatherless Everybody, homes, ugh, the institution yeah. of jail. We're not going to be able to solve for um, men who we've let have reckless behavior. Yeah. I think that we are going to have to take accountability for ourselves and yeah. then we'll follow. Yeah. Of course, they'll feel like it's their idea in the end. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like we made this up. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be like, we knew we could change the world. And us ladies are going to be like, yeah, yeah. uh huh. Uh, we yeah. decided we weren't going to settle. We made y'all rise to the yeah. occasion. And I think that is what it's going to take is us making them rise to the occasion yeah. with almost having to remove not ourselves from love, but being love. And if they don't reciprocate a saying, then you can't around. have me then. Yep. Not us turning off love. And I think that's what we're doing is we're turning off love. Versus saying, no, 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 I'm going to be love. If you are not Just love not with you. and you can't uh, join yep, me, next. Yep, I got to go. Yep. And you can stay wounded yeah. and go get you a wounded chicky boom boom. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So I um, know you're going to talk about your love life. <laughs> Non-existent. Uh, Who any, are we dating? Any unwounded. Uh, <laughs> Please DM Spicy so she can hit me up. Yes, let me know. I need to set her up. Set me up. I want to go on some dates. I want to go on blind dates. Are we going on dates? What are we doing? What are we doing for our love life if right now? If somebody would ask me. So nobody's asking you out. No. Do we like anybody? No. Is there anybody who we have our eye on? I went on two dates when I was in Dubai. Okay. One guy was like, I would never be with you. It was just fun. He was like. On the edge thug. If I was 24, I would have been like, this is my boyfriend. Yes. <laughs> this is my man. <laughs> the other date was like, uh, he was cool, but it was like, you're boring. I need a little more spice in my life. But aren't you the spice in his life? 
I need some spice too. <laughs> I want to laugh. I want to feel something. Okay, so he but, wasn't, was he a good dude? Like, did yes. he? Yes. Okay. I think they both were good dudes. Okay. But one was just a little too hood. He was like a thug. Okay, so the, we're, we're, we're trying to keep you out of jail. The, <laughs> um, but the good guy. Like, yeah. And, and this is why I feel like we turn good guys into villains. Why couldn't the good guy be good enough? Um, I don't feel like he was alpha enough. Okay. I feel like he was timid. Mm. And I went over this with my therapist. She's like, why were you so attracted to the thug? Mm. Or why were you so... She was like, what did you like about him? And I listed all the qualities that I liked about him. She was like, so you weren't attracted to his toxicity. It wasn't like you were trying to go to jail. Mm -hmm. You liked that he was a leader. You liked that he was confident. Mm -hmm. You liked that he made you feel protected. You liked that um, he was financially stable. Yeah. Like all of these things. You liked that he walked in the room and was, was respected. Yeah. So I, I can have those things in a good man, though. Not in somebody that's yeah. on the run from the cops. And you're saying that the nice guy, the guy who was swell, he, not, he a, didn't. not as confident. Okay. I don't feel like he was as confident. I don't feel like I feel like he was more like, I don't know if I can really date her. He was more timid. Mm -hmm. he, he was a little more shy. Yes, we had a little laughing moments. He was a little funny, but um, I don't feel like he was as um, confident. Okay. Question. Do people get 100% of you when they first meet you? Or do they sometimes get the wrong impression and need to experience you again? 90% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> probably 100% of me. And that's probably why I'm saying that. <laughs> that is the problem. Okay. But I've been pulling it back. I've been actually pulling it back. So no, not all of the time. No, they do not get 100%. <laughs> okay, me. you're going against the point that I was I'm trying sorry. to I'm sorry. I know what you're saying. But I would disagree with that. I think that while you are an authentic person, I think when it comes to the pressure that we put on ourselves with dating, yeah. I don't think that on the first date he gets to see how much you worship men and that he gets to experience right. your You're love right. and light. Everything. And yeah. Because you already told me that around men, you put on comedy be Simone, you mm -hmm. don't give Braylon. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I would disagree. Although I think that you have a big personality and yeah. you are extra and yeah. that's what, hey, look, I celebrate the extraness because I yeah. am too. I don't think they th immediately from the jump, they get to experience yeah. like you, all of your spirit. Yeah. And the thing that I'm challenging on with him is that he should get permission to be nervous around you and your greatness. Yeah. And for you to say like, well, he didn't make me laugh or, you know, he wasn't as confident as I wanted. Okay. I don't think we, that we need to say he was intimidated. I think that he should get permission to... Mm -hmm. Say, gosh, I'm fortunate to yeah. be here. I yeah, can't believe for sure. that I have like an incredible person in front for of sure. me. I would love to explore getting to know her more. And this is why I always say that someone needs to go on three dates before we throw them out if they haven't broke any of our deal breakers. I honestly would have went on another date with him if we were in the same country. Like, I didn't totally be like, I this guy's a loser. You travel internationally all the time. I know. 15 hours there? <laughs> God. <laughs> Dubai? I mean, we still text and stuff, but I'm like, I probably would have been on another date with him already mm -hmm. if we were closer. No, you would have been on another date with him if you hadn't already X'd him out. Because your energy, after you made up your mind that he wasn't enough for you, shifted. Your inner, The moment you say like, mm, no, I don't want you, mm -hmm. That's not like you using discernment in that moment. You're passing judgment because he didn't make you feel the things that you expected to feel on yeah. that date. And I'm saying that that chemistry that you were looking for sometimes has to be grown and nurtured. Yeah. Versus like, okay, you know, I I, I don't want to have to settle. And I don't think that this is settling. I think yeah. it's some somebody who's nervous or meeting you for the first time. Like, that's okay. They, he may be a little guarded too in the beginning. Yeah. So yeah. you going back out with him, you, we should have followed up with some text messages, like uh, showing him appreciation. Yeah. But not just that, letting him know that he was likable. Yeah. And I know you, once you made your mind up that you didn't like him, mm -hmm. started giving, you don't have a chance energy. Yeah. So therefore we're going to be hitting him up when we get off the show. I did. I talked after the day. Oh, no, we're going to be hitting him up with flirtation. <laughs> Come on, what flirtation. does your flirtation look like? Flirting? Ew. Yes. What, what does flirting look flirt? like? Because you said you, you'll do the funny. I compliment. And, okay. I guess. Is yeah. that flirtation? Yeah. You're beautiful. Is that flirtation? I guess not. No, it, I want to know <laughs> if that's your definition of flirtation. I you look so good. Heart eyes, emojis. Okay. 
So, yes, a compliment is sweet. Yeah. Right? That's an affirmation. Mm -hmm. Like, thank you. I am beautiful. I appreciate that. But I want you to lean more into uh, the playful uh, teasing of flirtation. Okay, give me an example. Uh, An example would be you sending him a text saying, uh, confession, I enjoyed you more than I gave off. Mm. I shouldn't be saying this, but... I would love this time for us to spend together on the beach. Like, like it could be simple. An invite. Yeah, it yeah. could be simple. But uh, you tell you put a mention of like something around the beach or just whatever. Now he gets to imagine like you in a swimsuit. Um, if you want to go even further, mm-hmm. uh, we can say, "I would just wish you were here next to me right now." Oh, that's cute. And that's flirtation. Versus, but it's like, did anyone tell you today that you're handsome? Do you mean it? You don't have to mean flirtation. <laughs> <laughs> I think I said this on No For Sure Podcast. Ooh, you don't wee. have to mean it. We want to stimulate emotions okay. that create excitement. We want to stim- because we want someone to be 100% into us on the first date. Like he's still getting to know you. So yeah. just like how he may not have come with flirtation as well. And he thinks that oh, I have to mean whatever I'm saying to her. That's too much pressure. I think for that sure, oftentimes sure. it's just being friendly and inviting yeah. and your likable self where this goes. and playful. We're not yeah. playful with each other anymore. Cause we're too worried about being too cool for school. Yeah. Trying to give off the energy that we don't need you. Yeah. But really we do want companionship. You Actually, want a I partner. do want a partner. Yep. So I'll be making you text him uh, when we get done. <laughs> okay, I will, girl. I'm like, okay. But you aren't dating any situation chips right now? No. Because if we start working together, I'm going to need to know. That's the problem. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm like, please, somebody date Okay, me. you mentioned that you were on a dating app. What happened with that? I gave like five guys my number. And then it was like, what is happening here? <laughs> it was so like. Y'all do not want relationships. Okay. How did, dating, you, how did you identify weird, that? But, um, I think by, I mean, two of them said it. Like, I just okay. want to have fun. I just, I'm They're like, already, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think by their effort, like, it was, wasn't really consistent. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, like, consistency. What did you, what energy did you give off? What did you put forward? Hey, I'm here. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was like, so long ago. I really okay. don't remember. I have no idea. I, but I, I'm like, I'm gonna tell you what. Uh, when we get done with this episode, I'm going to create a Bumble dating profile oh for my you. Gosh, I'm okay, gonna choose your photos. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm gonna write your bio, and I'm gonna show you <gasps> how we on, present Bumble. ourselves for the man that we want, want to, to attract. attract versus for what we would like. Yeah, and there's a difference between writing it for him versus for ourselves. Okay. Okay. I'm going to choose the prompt. I'm going to show you my bio. You <laughs> oh Lord have mercy. I can, I can only imagine <laughs> <laughs> because we didn't have to do this before, before you had like a relationship and you wanted the coaching. Now you need to be coached on like being what it looks like being single Yeah. because it doesn't have to feel like work. It doesn't have to feel bothersome or, you know, like, Oh, this is, I'm dreading this thing. Yeah. It can still be fun and playful and enjoyable because a lot of us think that, oh, when I get the relationship, that's when I'm going to, you know, go hard or go home. Yeah. But like, this is just the pregame yeah. to the relationship. If you Dating don't want to work though. now, yeah. there's only more work when you get into the relationship. Way more. Yeah. So I'm, ex- I'm excited. I'm going to do this for you. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> Find me a man out there. We're going to get you. Oh my God, B. I, you are incredible and you are incredible oh, in partnership. You. But I need you on the dating realm to work your dating life the way that you have your career. Yeah. Which means putting yourself out there, taking risks, Mm -hmm. uh, doing what you know is good for you. I need you to learn to fall in love with what is good for you. Yeah. And love is good for you. Love is good for you. Okay. You are going to let everybody know um, where they can find you, where they can get your product. What do you have going on right now? Like as far as projects. I'm on tour. Stand up. Y'all, please come see the shows. I'm in Ohio this weekend. I'm in all the flyers and stuff is on my page. Stand up. I'm back on the road. I haven't been on the road in seven months. Mm. So I'm excited to be back doing stand up. Okay. Dating for you is going to be challenging with your schedule. 
which means that our boo may not be in our city. He may be in one of the cities that we're visiting. Oh, I hope so. So we're going to set our mumble location to traveling. I got you. Ohio. (laughs) He might be in Toledo. (laughs) And you guys know you can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at Spicy Mati. Go to thespicylife.com. Click and subscribe. Share this episode with a friend. We're out here as uh, beautiful women making sure that we do our part to not just not settle, but make sure that we demand that men rise to the occasion of superiority. But we ourselves need to be superior women. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. I can't wait to get back in your course. (laughs) Jesus. (laughs) The spicy life. No, d- dating is different. Like when I need to teach you the communication part. Mm-hmm. You are great at communication. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to expressing yourself in relationship or even connecting with someone who you haven't formed a relationship with, yeah. it's very different. Yeah, right? for like sure. Creating for sure. a relationship out of thin air is very different. For sure. And so how you guide a man's emotions to becoming attached to you is a process. Yeah. And it is a numbers game. We're going to have to keep going through those doors until he's in door number 20. Okay. Deal. We're, we're done now. Oh! <laughs> The episode is over. Oh, I'm oh like, deal. <laughs> there you have that it. Was you so have good. just been spiced again. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs>